Hello, so in this video I will show you how to build an antenna which is uh, adapted for the LoRaWAN technology. So we uh, will be constructing an antenna in the 868 MHz band. So instead of buying an already made antenna as I show here, uh, which can be quite expensive and actually quite inefficient, I will show you how to build instead such an antenna which, is, which has a very good uh, rejection ratio. Here we are at 1.15, knowing that one is perfect antenna where all the energy is radiated. 1.15 is excellent. Most of these commercial antennas are uh, at best under two. Uh, some of them are even above two, which is a little bit the limit at which you should uh, select your antenna. So to build your antenna, you will need such a kind of a pigtail uh, that if it wants to focus, that you can find on Amazon. On one hand, it is an IPEX uh, connector that will be cut off. On the other hand, it is an SMA uh, connector. Uh, I show it here in that other view. And basically, we will cut the IPEX connector part of it and we will solder to it two copper wires as shown here, that will be soldered on and these two um, plastic parts which have been 3D printed will uh, serve as the mechanical structure to maintain the right angles between the feeding line and the two horizontal parts of the antenna. You will simply use electrical wire, you just take electrical wire like this and you will cut uh, some piece of it. Uh, the exact length doesn't matter right now because we will tune the antenna by, uh, once it is soldered, we will shorten the two parts until we get the right tuning at the right frequency that we want to tune the antenna at. So, to remove the insulating uh, part of this wire, you just use such a cutter. You place your wire down on the table and your knife must be positioned flat like this at a very low angle and you just pull the wire like this and it will very easily remove the insulation as shown here. So you do this for the whole wire. So once you have your uh, wire completely stripped of any isolation, you get this piece of copper which is not straight. So how to make it straight? For this we will use an electrical drill and I will show you some trick. So you simply insert the copper wire in the head of the drill so that it, it is blocked. Then you will insert the other end of the copper wire into the vise. You have to squeeze it tight so it doesn't move and you simply make the vise turn like this and you pull on it. So after using the drill we obtain a very straight piece of copper wire that will be used to continue the antenna build process. So first of all, we will basically cut that piece of wire into equal parts, more or less. We will trim that later to tune the antenna. There we go. So we have two elements of the antenna and we will cut off the IPEX connector. So I will show this on this camera. That's the coax cable. So we will strip down with a knife, we will strip down about a few millimeters of the, as small as possible, of the isolator, of the external shield. So here we go, we have cut about 3-4 millimeters of the shield. I'll show it on this camera, we have exposed a few millimeters of the shield. So once this is done, you remove the braided metallic part which constitutes the shield and you flip that braiding backward onto the coax cable in such a way that you expose the center conductor which is protected by a plastic dielectric material. So I showed this on this camera. So you flip 
the braid backwards onto the coax cable and it exposes the center conductor. So we still have to cut the plastic part and you have to be very careful not to cut it. You just remove the plastic insulation of that center conductor and you leave about as small as possible, half a millimeter if you succeed to do this, between the braiding, the external braiding and the exposed center conductor. This is very important. There you go. So you have about one or two millimeters of the exposed center conductor. I will show it on this camera. So the center conductor is now exposed. What we will now do is push the braid back so it doesn't short with the center conductor if it wants to focus. Here you go. You see that we have gathered the external braiding on one side and the center conductor is flipped at 180 degrees in the other direction. So the inner conductor will be soldered on one of the radiating elements of the antenna and the braiding, which is the ground actually of the antenna, will be soldered on another uh, part of the copper wire. So basically one piece of the copper wire will be soldered on this side and another uh, piece of, so of uh, copper wire will be soldered on the center element, center element on that side. We will solder here and here. Obviously, none of these two elements must touch each other. So you have to check with a multimeter that you don't have any short circuits between the two elements. So I will proceed with the soldering of the elements. So you obviously need a solder iron and you need some basic soldering equipment to do this. Do not solder directly on the 3D printed piece because it will melt it obviously. So try to have some supporting surface. So I will do this off camera. Eventually what can be done to mold the part into the, to mold the antenna in the plastic part, you can heat it up a bit so that it gets in position. Once the soldering part is done, we will have to check that we have no short circuits between the two elements. One element has to be connected to the inner con conductor and we see that it connects. The other element must be connected to shield. And we see that we have continuous contact, which is okay. And we do not have any short circuits between the right and left elements. So there we go, we have a soldered antenna, which is almost finished. In order to physically secure the antenna and to support it mechanically, we will clip the second part of the 3D printed case and we will use some hot glue in the middle, like a sandwich, to secure and to glue the 3D printed part. So I will now put some heat shrink on the antenna elements. So you have to use, of course, the right diameter heat shrink. Just insert it like this. And you can use uh, a blowgun like this, which is not as aggressive as um, a lighter or some flames. It doesn't melt, uh, it won't melt your plastic part. And you just shrink them with the... So now that we have applied the H-ring on the antenna, it is physically ready and we now have to tune it, the antenna. In order to tune that antenna, we will use uh, an antenna analyzer like this one, Nano VNA. So the Nano VNA is a device that will allow us to tune the antenna to the frequency that we want. But in order to do this, this is very important when you use a Nano VNA, you have to recalibrate every time the device in the frequency range that is of interest. And to do this with the Nano VNA comes three little plugs, connectors, 
which will be used to calibrate the device. So to tune the antenna, we unscrew it from the VNA so that we can measure the length of each element. So from the center conductor up to here, we see that we are way too long. We will cut it to 80 millimeters. So about here. At this stage, the precision is not important yet because we know we are way too long. So we can roughly, at this stage, we can roughly cut the uh, both elements to that value. There we go. We'll measure. So to make measurements easier, I have uh, drawn a white line and a black center dot so that I know exactly where the center conductor comes and it is from that point that I will measure uh, the length of the antenna. So we see that we are still not tuned very well. The SWR is still at 2.5 uh, at this stage. So we will continue shortening both elements until we improve and we optimize the SWR. So let's shorten the antenna again. Since we are pretty close to the good tuning length, we have to cut very, very small parts, half a millimeter at a time, so as to not to cut too much. Because obviously, if you cut too much of the antenna, you will be out of tune and you won't be able to get it back on the right track. So let's see where we are now. We are at 1.5 SWR, so that would be already a very uh, good antenna to use. But we can tune it some more. So we will cut a little bit more. Okay, so we've cut and tuned the antenna some more. So we've shortened again the elements. And we can see now at 869 MHz, we can see uh, SWR of 1.4. What is very nice is that we see that it is a broad range antenna which will work not only precisely on the frequency of 868 MHz but which will work on the left and on the right of the frequencies but we can still improve a bit the antenna. Let's tune some more. So let's check the tuning right now. What do we got? So here we see that we have the antenna tuned at 1.2 at 869 MHz with a very deep and large bottom, which means that in the lower range on the left and the right of that 868-69 MHz, we have a 1.2 VSWR. So here we go, we have a tuned antenna thanks to the VNA device and for those of you who want to build the same antenna, the final, final optimized length I got per element is as indicated here, 78.5 millimeters from the center conductor on each side. So that's the distance between the center conductor and the end of each element using regular standard copper wire, electrical wire and heat shrink on it. If you don't have any heat shrink, it will not be the same length. The length will probably be longer because the velocity factor is um, smaller with heat shrink on the copper wire. So that means that you have to have a longer element. So basically, if you copy what I did here, a target for a length of more or less 78.5 millimeters on each side. The pigtail, as I have shown previously, is a standard pigtail found on Amazon, which has a 50 ohm impedance. There you go, up to you now to build your antennas for your LoRa devices. Enjoy and see you in the next one.